Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of RJ's Pit Stop. As you heard from that special open, uh, we uh, we lost an icon this week. Um, Eddie Van Halen, in my opinion, is the greatest guitar player of all time. Uh, I know there's you know plenty of others, and I'm not trying to disrespect anybody else, but for my money, Eddie Van Halen is i mean everyone knows he's one of the all-time greats in my opinion he is the greatest i love that guy um his music is always going to live on see i got 1984 hanging up behind me the greatest rock album i've ever heard in my life um i'm biased though they happen to be my favorite rock band of all time um yeah eddie van halen so <clears throat> i want to Whenever a celebrity passes, and whenever an artist of, of any kind, whether it's actor, musician, um, even an athlete, you're an artist, you have to, you know, perfect your craft, um, unless, you always leave an impact when you go, when you have created something, and um, country music DJ Bobby Bones, uh, he's, you know, very popular, his... His uh, morning show gets simulcast on a ton of different stations all over the country. And uh, I was actually listening to him, I think it was this past Wednesday morning, because uh, we lost uh, Eddie on Tuesday. Um, and then Wednesday morning, I turned on the Bobby Bones show, and Bobby said something that really, really stuck with me, and I think it's always going to stick with me. And he said... You know, it's obviously a shame that Eddie Van Halen died. I'm not trying to, you know, undermine that. I'm a huge fan. But unless you really, unless you personally knew the guy, or unless you were waiting on like new material from him, he's not dead. Um, his music is always going to live on. We will always get to listen to Running with the Devil, like you guys heard in the opening. We're always going to have Jump in Panama. We're always going to have, again, that whole 1984 album, just run the whole track list. You're always going to have this artist's art. So, unless you were waiting on them to drop new music, which I don't believe we were with Eddie Van Halen, and unless you knew him personally, he's not gone. And Bobby Bones used Tom Petty as an example, and it's a great one. Like, their art is always going to be around for us to consume, and we have to be grateful for that. Uh, because long after Eddie and Alex... And David Lee Roth and Sammy Hagar and Wolfgang. It, when everyone from Van Halen is gone, we are still going to have their music, and their music will always be iconic. So rest in peace to Eddie Van Halen. His music and his legacy will always live on. That being said, we had an elimination race today at the Charlotte Motor Speedway Roval. And what do you know? The road course ace in NASCAR right now, Chase Elliott, won again. He has now won four straight road course races. The only person to ever do that, ever, is this guy, Jeff Gordon. They showed a graphic that he won six straight. Um, that is unheard of. That is insane. Chase Elliott has got it figured out. I got to be honest, I did not see this coming. Uh, this kid from Dawsonville, Georgia, happens to be the best road course racer out there. I didn't see that coming, I'll be honest with you. Um, but man, he just absolutely puts it on them. Every time they go to a road course, he's the guy. Everyone else is playing catch up to him. Uh, I think he won today's race by like two, two and a half seconds. And it could have been more than that if there hadn't been a caution with, what, 10 to go or whatever it was. Um, this guy, this guy has got it figured out. Um, and they mentioned something interesting on the show or on the show, during the race, on the broadcast, there are six road course races on the 2021 schedule. Everybody better go back to the drawing board this offseason and figure out what to do on these road courses because if you don't, Chase Elliott's got six wins guaranteed right there for next year, and this guy's going to be the number one seed going into the playoffs next year, which isn't a problem. I think NASCAR needs the youth movement. Um, but still, everyone's going to have to go to the drawing board or Chase Elliott's going to smoke everybody at all six of those races, especially a couple of them the Cup guys have never ran at. Coda, Road America, the Indy Road Course, completely new. So a level playing field, you have to give the advantage to the guy that just 
runs road courses better. And right now that's Chase Elliott. No one is near him. We did something today that has not been done since the 1950s. The NASCAR Cup Series raced in the rain. They took the green flag on rain tires. Um, it stopped raining at Charlotte Motor Speedway. The track got dry, and they ended up changing back to the regular tires. Uh, thank God. It was it was interesting. I will say I do enjoy not having a rain delay. Uh, the rain tires and that whole scenario, which, by the way, if you watched the Bush race on Saturday and saw them driving through that monsoon with all that standing water, it was fun. It was interesting to watch. It was very gimmicky, though, um, and I don't want to see that, you know, a lot. But it's also better than red flagging the race and potentially not even getting to finish it. So, NASCAR going forward, I really like what they put on the track today. I got to be honest. Starting with the rain tires, when the track dried up, they changed to the slicks. Um, they looked like they were going to have to go back to rain tires because it looked like it was going to rain again. But if that's what we have to do to avoid a rain delay... Um, I'm all for it. Obviously, it's only going to happen for the road courses. Um, you can't run rain tires at Daytona. You tear them up after five laps, if that, even if you get five laps, honestly. So, um, yeah, the rain was definitely a new element that uh, was added in that nobody really knew what they were doing. So that was fun to watch. So I mentioned how Chase Elliott just kind of had everybody covered. That is because Clint Boyer had his problems during that race. I personally think Chase Elliott and Clint Boyer had the two best cars today, and I believe they would have battled for the win. And Clint Boyer is a lot more desperate than Chase Elliott, so I think I know how that one would have gone, um, and Chase Elliott fans would not have been happy. But I do feel bad for Clint Boyer today, man. Um, the guy ran up front. He had one of the best cars, and then obviously... He has the power steering problem, goes to the back. He ends up finishing 10th. And I was really hoping for some late race cautions there with like 10 to go and then like 6 to go and then like 4 to go. Like if we could have got some more restarts, Clint Boyer might have been able to chip a couple more of those guys off and, you know, a green-white checkered finish with Boyer and Elliott. Hey, I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bet on the guy who's more desperate. But I do feel bad for Clint Boyer. Um, he was eliminated from the playoffs today in his final season running um, in the Cup Series. Running at all, I guess. Uh, because in 2021, the news broke earlier this week. In 2021, Clint Boyer will be moving to the Fox Sports booth with Mike Joy and Jeff Gordon calling the Cup races. I think that is going to be electric. This is where Clint Boyer belongs. If it's not in a race car, it's in front of a camera on television. Clint Boyer is absolute money with a microphone. Him and Jeff Gordon have great chemistry. It's a really fun dynamic because you know they didn't get along when they were both race car drivers. But now that they're both out, they're really they're they're funny to watch. And you got Mike Joyce gonna sit there and you know have to deal with that. I think it's gonna be a really good time, and I'm really looking forward to that. I'm not surprised. I kind of figured that this was probably going to happen, especially when you look at Chase Briscoe with, what, eight wins in the Bush Series, and Kyle Larson is still out there, and I know Tony loves him. Um, I think Clint... I think Clint made this decision on his own, but I think he also saw the writing on the wall that if I don't go ahead and take this opportunity, it might not be in my hands anymore. I do think Chase Briscoe will be in that 14 car next year. I think that's a great move. I think he's ready for the Cup Series. Um, yeah. And I believe Kyle Larson ends up at Hendrick Motorsports. Speaking of Hendrick Motorsports... Kyle Larson will not be in the 48 car because Alex Bowman is now moving from the 88 to the 48. And there's a lot of people confused about this and why would they make a lateral move like that? If he already drives for the team, why are we making a big deal out of him just switching his car number? And I agree. No, I, I, I'll be honest. This isn't that big of a deal to me. Um, we don't retire numbers in NASCAR. We just don't. 43's not retired, 3's not retire, retired, Oof. 21's not retired, 11, 24, and 48 won't be retired. That's just not what we do. And so, 
this to me is just, this to me was probably a money thing. And I know Ally has a partnership with Hendrick Motorsports. I am assuming Ally didn't want Kyle Larson. And I am assuming Ally was a lot more comfortable having Alex Bowman as their spokesperson as opposed to Kyle Larson. That's what this screams to me. Ally probably didn't want Kyle Larson, but I believe that he's going to have some sponsors lined up. I really do. And I really do think Kyle Larson will be the fourth driver at Hendrick Motorsports in 2021. The question remains, is it going to be in the five car? The 25 car, I've seen some rumors about the number 57, which I believe Brian Vickers won a Bush Series championship for Hendrick in the 57. Um, I know he ran the 57. I don't know if he won a championship or not. I think he did. Um, Could have looked it up. Didn't care. That is also Kyle Larson's sprint car number, so there's that connection there. I personally want to see the 25 come back. I think that number, and there's a certain, I don't know how to describe this, but for me, there's just a certain persona that goes with the number 25 at Hendrick Motorsports, and I think Kyle Larson fits it perfectly. So I personally want to see Kyle Larson in the 25 car next year. I also wouldn't mind seeing the 5 car brought back, but whatever. That is my opinion on that whole deal. I'm assuming Ally just didn't want him, and Ally wanted Alex Bowman instead. Um I don't know that Alex Bowman's performance is going to pick up any. Um, it's a lateral move. It's the same team, same cars, you would think. So um, not not really that big of a deal there, in my opinion. But, hey, it was, it was a story. Also a story, Haley Deegan will be driving a truck next week at Kansas. She will be in the truck race. Um, that's the next step. Good for her. I'm really glad that they are bringing her along slowly. She's also going to run the ARCA race next weekend. And I love how they're just bringing her up gradually instead of just shoving her up to the top because she's a good-looking girl who can talk on camera. Um, we've seen that done before with a certain IndyCar driver that had a big sponsor behind her and was pushed to the top way too early and failed miserably. Um, I don't want to see that with Haley Deegan. I think Haley Deegan is, I, I think she's talented. Um, I think we're going to learn a lot about her in the truck next weekend. And I hope, I personally would like to see her in a truck full time next year. If she runs well at Kansas in that truck, I want to see her go truck series racing full time next year. I think it'd be fun. I think it brings new eyes to the truck series. I think the truck series could use a little bit of star power, use a little bit of juice. Um, and I think Haley Deegan's got it. Um, people like her. Um, I like her. I think she's, I think she's proved herself so far. Um, but again, the further she moves up, the tougher the competition's going to get, and she's going to have to prove it. Um, and so we're going to see. I think she will, though. More news this week. Justin Marks uh, started his own team, and he is going to have Daniel Suarez driving for him. I don't know where the hell that came from. I'll be honest. I, okay. All right. Justin Marks ran like a couple cup races. He's a road racing guy. Um, I didn't think he had that kind of money to start his own team, but all right, bud. Good for you. Good for Daniel Suarez. It's a new opportunity. Um, hopefully that team's competitive. Hopefully they're not a 30th place team. You know, that's, that's boring. That's good. That's a waste of money. So, um, good for them, I guess. Uh, the most exciting news for me, though, this week, Matt DiBenedetto is staying at the Wood Brothers for 2021. This is all I've asked for, okay? And they also announced that Austin Sendrick will be taking that Wood Brothers ride in 2022. So Matt DiBenedetto has one more year at the Wood Brothers, and I love it. That's all I asked for. <clears throat> I didn't ask for a lifetime deal for him at Wood Brothers. Just give him one more year because you never know how much things can change. And we have been seeing all these older guys start retiring. We're not done. We still have some older guys up there. And we're going to have some movement here in these next couple years. And I think Matt DiBenedetto is putting himself in a great spot to take over a really, really good cup ride in 2022. I don't know which one. I've got some scenarios playing in my head, but I'm not going to get into them right now because that would take a while. 
but I'm very happy that he will be back with the Wood Brothers next year. And I'm going to tell you right now, Matt DiBenedetto will get his first career win and the Wood Brothers' 100th career win in 2021. Lastly, I'm going to leave you all with this. I did not. I mentioned today was an elimination race, but I didn't talk about who got eliminated. Clint Boyer was eliminated, unfortunately, in his final season. Eric Almarola was eliminated again. Um, that's a t Talladega really screwed him. He had a really good shot to win and whatever. Austin Dillon was eliminated, which, listen, I know they're not going to be happy about getting eliminated, but no one, and I mean no one, thought they were getting out of the first round. So the runs that they put together in the playoffs and the fact that they even made it to the second round, congratulations. Good job, y'all. I, I, no one saw that coming, and especially me, the biggest Austin Dillon hater out there. Um, but then there was someone else who got eliminated today, and... He called his own shot. What can I say? A couple weeks ago, Kyle Busch said, we're going to get eliminated next round. And damn, he did it, man. He really did it. And although he has not ran well this year, he has not won a race. I think he's won two stages all year. This is a huge sigh of relief for everyone still in the playoffs. Because there are just certain guys, even when they're down, you need to just finish them. You need to kick them when they're down. Kyle Busch is that guy. Because what you could not have is Kyle Busch get hot. If Kyle Busch gets hot, he's getting his third championship. But that's not going to happen. He was eliminated today. I don't understand this, this fall from grace. Uh, this, is, this, this has been an awful year for him. It really has. And that's because of the expectations that we set for Kyle Busch every year. Sometimes they're too high, but damn, I thought he'd win a couple, you know, not go winless. That's uh, that's wild. He still has a chance these last four races, but he doesn't matter anymore because he's not in the playoffs. Let's be real. That being said, we are down to eight drivers. This is the final round before the championship race at Phoenix is set. And from what I have seen all year, and especially in these playoffs, I personally believe the Final Four, three, by the way, I made a Final Four prediction before the playoffs started, and I'm sticking with three of those guys. Kevin Harvick, Denny Hamlin, and Chase Elliott, they will be racing for a championship in Phoenix. Now, before the uh, playoffs started, I picked Ryan Blaney, and they absolutely imploded in the first round. But I am picking his teammate to go to Phoenix, not Joey. Brad Keselowski is going to be the fourth driver to go to Phoenix, along with Chase Elliott, Denny Hamlin, and Kevin Harvick. That is my prediction. That's what I believe the Final Four is going to be. Those four guys are going to race for a championship. And Kevin Harvick has been dominant. And if I had to bet my life on one of them, it's going to be Harvick. But NASCAR needs, and I've been saying this for years now, they need, with a capital N, Chase Elliott to win the championship. They need a young star to take over and carry the sport into the future. Chase Elliott is the most popular driver in the sport. This would be an absolute perfect time for Chase Elliott to take over and win the championship. I don't know if he can beat Kevin Harvick straight up. And, I mean, we're not going to disregard Denny Hamlin either. Um, and Brad, you know, throw him in there. But NASCAR needs Chase Elliott. I do think Harvick's still going to win. But if Chase Elliott can break through and win the championship, that would be huge for NASCAR. And I know NASCAR wants it to. So that is it for today. Like I said, next week they're going to be in Kansas. The final round starts. We get Kansas, Texas, Martinsville, and then we have a championship race down in, or over in Phoenix. Um, it's going to be fun to watch. We're almost there. We're almost to the finish line. So uh, we will see you guys next week. Oh, yeah.